Good evening. Welcome to the Mass on this 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The celebrant this evening is Father Okumu. Welcome to the year of the Eucharist. We thank you for your flexibility as we adopt the changes in the liturgy during COVID-19. This week, our cantor will be joining us to sing some parts of the Mass. Just two weeks until our virtual Vacation Bible School program starts. Children entering preschool four years old through fifth grade in the fall are welcome. Spaces are limited, so don't delay. To register, please visit our website. On Sunday, August 2, we will celebrate the confirmation at the 8.30 and at the 3 p.m. Those who attend the 8.30 a.m. Mass, please be aware that the spaces will be limited. Please consider going to an alternate Mass on that weekend. Please pray for our candidates who are preparing for the Sacrament of First Communion and Confirmation. It is St. Vincent de Paul's Sunday. Please give generously. We now ask that you turn off all cell phones so that we can begin the Mass. Jumbo. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. To celebrate these mysteries, let's go to mind our sins and ask for the Lord's forgiveness. Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy, may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Gloria a tu ser en cielo, en la tierra pasa la sol. Que ama el Señor, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God. See you on the holy one. 
your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful to keeping your commands through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. In those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. With much lenience, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let them grow together until the harvest. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruits, the weeds appeared as well. The servants of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to go out and pull them up? He replied, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. Then at the harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into the barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Another wonderful evening for a short homily. Why? Because outside is good. I know uh, many of you are going out to be having barbecues at uh, your backyard, so I don't want to keep you here for long. Secondly, because we also have uh, um, one of us who will report on the updates of the remodeling of the church. Dick Pine is just right here today with us. But, uh, however, I would like to just say a few things on the gospel reading of today. The gospel reading of today is a continuation of the reading that we heard last Sunday. Last Sunday we were told about a farmer going out into the farm and to plant the seeds. And the seed that fell on good ground, we are told, produced 180, 60, and 30. And he was so happy. So we see also something about the seed and the crops and the harvesters and the farmer. And it was explained clearly to us that the farmer, the one who went out to sow, was God himself. So today we see this parable, the story, it's so beautiful. I would like to refer you to the story of creation. On the third day, 
he created this and that and he saw that it was good that in the end on the last day he said let us create humanity in our own image and likeness and when he saw a human person he said it is good meaning that all of us God intended to create all of us good because we are all in the image and likeness of God before God we are all good and once he created and he saw that we were good he put in us his will and the will of God in us that is that we may know God the will of God in us is that we may love God and we may serve God so it's up to us to do the will of God. So today the story of the wheat and the weeds is that we are all wheat. We are all put in a good ground. We are all expected to produce a good harvest. But many times we turn around and plant the weeds ourselves. No somewhere else. But we do. When we turn away from God, we turn away from each other. When we prefer darkness to the light, we are turning away and we are planting the weeds in our lives. So we need not to blame anybody. It's up to us. It's up to you and I, people of God, to continue removing those weeds when we go to prayer, when you go to the sacraments, the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of the Eucharist, when we connect with other brothers and sisters at the church, and when we become loving to God and to each other, then we will continue being good in the eyes of God. But when we turn around, and run away from God and run away from the goodness of God then immediately we plant the weeds that will choke us in the end so today Jesus is teaching is telling his disciples it's not your responsibility to go out there and uproot don't judge anybody None of us is innocent in the eyes of God. We are all good or we are all sinners in the eyes of God. So we have to continue struggling, perfecting ourselves as we walk our faith journey. It will be up to the end of the harvest. After we come to the end, it will be up to God. It will be up to the angels of God who will now call us and say, what did you produce when you lived? And then it's God himself who will separate those who are good and those who are bad. And when I feel that I'm not good, I'm given another chance in this world that I may be able to repent and turn around so that I may enter that kingdom of God because God wants us all to be saved and not to be lost. So what is it that you do today, this week, to return to God with all your life, with all your mind, with all your being, to return to your prayer life, to return to my, our sacramental life, and God will be happy with us. And the angels of God will come and support us in this world as we walk and walk together. At this now, I stop and ask Big Pile to please come forward and give us that very important update, update that everybody has been waiting for for a long time.
Thank you, Father. We've not had an update in a while because there really hasn't been much going on, as you can imagine, with the pandemic and all of the other things that we're all experiencing. The last time I spoke, we had submitted plans to the city of Linwood, and we're waiting for them to approve the plans and give us the building permits. Well, they're not fast to start with, but with everything else going on, it, it was a pretty slow process. However, this week we did receive the actual, we, we received the, the approval and we have the building permits in hand. So at this point we can begin work. <clears throat> the, we, <clears throat> we have submitted an addendum to the plans and the subcontractors are now all submitting their plans for approval, but those things move fairly quickly and won't stop us from getting started with the, with the project. We have a meeting Monday with the Archdiocese, which I am anticipating will be the final approval and we'll get contracts signed and in the hands of the contractor so that they can move forward. We did have to make some changes to our original design in order to keep the project within budget. Originally, our hope was to remove the choir loft and open everything up into the new narthex. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to remove the choir loft, but we will have the new narthex and everything will be reasonably open to that new narthex. Some of the other changes we made are architectural. They really don't have any impact and they won't be obvious to anybody that hasn't compared a couple of sets of, of plans. So we're moving forward. We're moving forward fairly rapidly at this point. Our anticipation right now is that we will, the contractor will start mobilizing on August 3rd, which is a Monday. They'll bring in all the fencing and the trailers and the equipment that they will need. And then we will actually start construction on August 6th. August 10th, I'm sorry, which is the following Monday. And that will start outside. Uh, the idea is to do some of the foundation, replace some of the sidewalks initially, as well as start on the interior. So we're moving forward uh, and everything's gonna start up and you're gonna actually be able to see some progress. Now I will say that once the mobilization takes place on August 3rd, the front parking lot, the circular parking lot, will no longer be available. That's going to be used for construction equipment and for trailers and other, other construction related things. So all the parking will then be in the back parking lot. The, the front parking lot will be gated off. So just so you're aware of that. But again, you will start seeing progress very quickly and we'll get this job done. So thank you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before, before all ages, God from God, God life from, from God, God, through God from through God, begotten and not man, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made. For us men and for salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered dead and was buried. And we rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now uh, offer our prayers to our loving God. That our church might allow weeds to grow together with the wheat, trusting the only God can separate them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That our civil authorities might always treat people fairly, especially those who are considered to be on the margins of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Prayer. For a greater respect for all human life, from conception until natural death, and for the conversion of all who use violence as a solution to problems, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The ch children and families who spend time this summer in relaxation and recreation might be kept safe and well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all our virtual Bible study volunteers be inspired as they continue to make progress in fulfilling their goals in sharing the word of God to our parish children this summer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our sick and elderly brothers and sisters, especially Viva Aguirre and Gary Becker, may be recovered with the Lord's wings and strengthen their hearts as they find comfort in God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead, especially Maria Lourdes de Silva, may come into God's kingdom of light, love, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will hear the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We ask all these through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty. May I accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for the good of the Father's church. Our God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel and so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit with the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give them the Lord our God. Yes. It's to be right and just and our duty and our salvation always and ever to give you thanks, Lord Holy, Almighty and Eternal, through Christ our Lord. For through the Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death and summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works and for to have called us out of darkness into our, your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full, full of your glory, glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like beautiful, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, giving you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, took the chalice, once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence to minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, Bishops Daniel and Eusebio, and all your people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us, Lord, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph Samos, Jesus spouse, all the apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, our God Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously, 
grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to apostles, my peace I give you, my, uh, my give I, peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, the body and blood of Christ give us peace for eternal life. Amen. Graciously present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those who you have imbued, imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ, glorifying God by our life. Thanks be to God and have a good evening. At this time, the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion will distribute the Eucharist. There will be two stations to receive communion in the church, one on the right side toward Father Okuma's chair, one at the back by the bell. Please wait for the ushers to lead you to your designated stations. As you line up to receive Holy Communion, please be mindful of six feet social distancing. When receiving Holy Communion, you should step forward, bow, and say, Amen. When the extraordinary minister of Holy Communion says, the body of Christ, then extend your arms and cup your hands so that minister can respectfully drop the host without touching you. Then step aside. Lower your mask and consume the host. The body of Christ should be consumed right away. Do not wait until you have left the church. After receiving communion, please proceed to the exit 
as the mass ends. Thank you. Pure vessel, pray 